we're finally getting around to reviewing a Grex airbrush. Spiky bits. Welcome back, hobby maniacs. I'm Rob Bear from SpikyBits.com. Today we're going to check out one of Grex's awesome airbrushes for, well, not just tabletop miniatures, but for pretty much anything you want to airbrush in general. Uh, of course, our focus here is on tabletop wargaming, but this isn't necessarily a tabletop wargaming review, although we are going to paint some, uh, some miniatures with the brush. Now, Grex has been around, or at least I've known about Grex. Uh, of course, they make power tools. They make air. Um, air tools in the mainstream kind of, you know, tool genre, so to speak. So they have experience with this sort of thing. They came onto the miniature gaming scene about 10-ish years ago. They were at Gen Con and they made a big splash. A buddy of mine actually picked up one of their combo kits. I ended up uh, owning it for a while and using that in conjunction with my Iwata, I learned a lot about the Grex system. Now, since then, they have refined their airbrushes. They put out new ones specifically more geared towards min the miniature hobby in general with uh, some specific features, which is really cool. And they they are, they are very um, easy to use. They have a little bit of a high learning curve, but the resources they have on their site are really what sets them apart. Now, Spray Gunner is a great retailer for airbrushes. We've been talking about them for years now. We've reviewed a bunch of their airbrush compressors, their airbrushes they've sent over, the generic uh, name brand stuff like H&S. Uh, haven't, obviously, we've done Iwata years in the past. And now we're on to Grex. They wanted me to talk about Grex for them. And I was like, sure, I know actually a lot about Grex. I, um, a lot of times when we were at conventions, we were set up right across from Bryant, who is the Grex representative. So I've actually learned a lot just by um, just being in the right place at the right time about Grex airbrushes and owning a couple of myself. So they're very interesting and there's pros and cons to every airbrush and Grex is no exception. So let's let's take a look. Uh, let's go over to Spray Gunner site. I'm going to show you where you can check out all the stuff on Spray Gunner site, but I'm also going to show you Grex's site because there is a lot of really good resources and uh, that you need to be aware of for both troubleshooting and learning more about their product in general. So first off, here's Spray Gunner's website. Now, there is uh, all sorts of material on here. I've shown you this a million times, but it's very easy to find what you're looking for. And obviously, they always have stuff on sale. It looks like they have um, a whole bunch of other products on sale, too. But just go down to Airbrush, and then you slide over. You can go by use. You can look things up. Or you can just go straight into whatever you're specifically looking for. This is going to be the Genesis series. Uh, Tritium is actually pretty good, too. Now, there's two different types of Grex airbrushes when it comes to uh, gravity fed or siphon feed. And I don't feel like siphon feed's where it's at for this hobby, just because you add one more step of failure to your whole airbrush process. So I generally recommend stay away from siphon feed for all miniature related things. It works great for automotive and that sort of business space and, and everything's good there, but not in the hot. So here is uh, the XGI-3 and the three means it's a 0.3 millimeter um, a needle here, but they're adjustable, which is really cool. So it kind of just doesn't matter. You, you might just have to spend a little bit more money to get an upgrade kit, depending on what you're trying to do. Point three is also the exact same size as Iwata. So it, it's going to give you all of the uh, detail. You get lots of cups, uh, reservoir cups for your airbrush, and then it's going to give you the pros and the cons. It's got quick fit uh, switch out. Uh, magnetic little tips that you can switch out which is really cool I'll show you those here in a second the three different size reservoirs is pretty cool they they still use the PTFE the Teflon seals though not as many as the H&S stuff that I've shown you here in the past but that's okay like I said this is a very rugged and durable airbrush it has a little bit of a high learning curve but overall uh, it's a great airbrush it's it's definitely worth picking up if you're looking you like i want something now i don't want to buy you know the the h and i stuff you I, you always talk about robbie b i want to get you know i want to get this grex i want to try out grex i've heard good things about grex nothing wrong with it pick it up check it out try it um resource wise they have the best resources to help you out there and speaking of resources once you go to grex's website you can kind of see what i'm talking about here so they've got uh, they got some videos on their airbrushes themselves, and here's Bryant right here doing a demo on something. Oh, how to clean your Grex airbrush, 
and some other demo-y type stuff. But as you see here, and you can get to this from the actual um, XG page itself, and, and the XG airbrush, if I haven't mentioned it, this was specifically designed for our hobby from the beginning. So it, there was just the XG, and I've used the XG. I actually owned the XG, I owned the XN, and I owned one of the trigger airbrushes. I don't remember which one, but the trigger airbrush isn't for me. It might be for you if you're, um, you, you don't have full use of your, your hands and your fingers and stuff, maybe, you know, um, disabled folks or veterans, you know, things like that. The trigger is great. Or you've never learned on an airbrush before. You've never touched an airbrush. I've touched an airbrush and it was very difficult to go back to a trigger kind of pull uh, for my airbrush ink. That's maybe not for everybody. So just keep that in mind. Maybe maybe you want to try a trigger system. There isn't a whole lot of trigger airbrushes out there and the trigger airbrush from Greg's is just as good as the airbrush I'm about to show you. But the XGs were made with our hobby uh, in mind, which is really cool. Or just miniatures in general, right? This is a resource page. This page is all, look at it, all resources. That's what I'm saying. Like, Grex has the best like help and customer service out there. You can't get H&S up on the phone. If you have a problem with your order, you can get a hold of Spray Gunner, sure, no problem. But Grex has got you covered. As a matter of fact, if your airbrush is clogged, you can send it to them, they'll fix it. They're, you know, depending on the level of work, generally it's free, but you know, if it's super crazy, they might charge you for it. Matter of fact, I've had the um, unfortunate uh, pleasure, or I guess uh, going on the record of of giving handing the worst clogged airbrush he had ever seen to that man right there in that video. Uh, I let, or I think at some point I traded my airbrush to Kelsey Haley from the Wobby Modelers, and he clogged it so bad that he couldn't get it to work. I was like, "That's cool. Brian can get it done." We were at a convention. He handed it to Brian, and Brian was like. I've never seen an airbrush clog this bad before. I don't know if I can fix this. We might have to send it back to the factory. Literally that bad because, well, it turns out you have to do maintenance on your airbrush, folks. But, okay, story time's over. Let's talk about this product. So there's lots and lots of stuff in here for you to check out. They have uh, the product breakdowns themselves and, of course, using it. Uh, then some information about their different features. Now, they do have a different nozzle design that I'm about to show you. Very important. They have the preset adjustment knob. They have great needles, uh, but they bend just like any other needle out there. And that was actually one of the problems that, one of the reasons I got, um, well, I traded off my all my Grex airbrushes at the time because they were a little bit harder to source materials for, but nowadays you can find these things at a lot of hobby towns and mail order is a lot more reliable in 2019 than it was in 2010, so to speak. So just keep that in mind. Um, they're, they're pretty readily accessible right now. The quick fit needle caps is pretty neat. I'll show you this here in a second. And the nozzle conversion kit. So no matter which one of these XGs you pick up, if you want to go a bigger needle or a smaller needle, you can do that with the, the nozzle conversion kit right here, which I want to say they're right around $50 to convert that. Um, but that was the old price and I'm actually not sure. Grex actually doesn't sell stuff on their site. So they're pretty cool about that. Whereas they want folks to buy it from the retailers and the vendors themselves to get that, you know, because that's how some companies work. And plus you get that hands-on experience. But that being said, they also have a ton of resources here on their page. You can call them. And like I said, if you can't get your airbrush to work, literally can send it to them and they will clean it out and get it working for you. There may be a bit of a delay. And if it's really bad, they may charge you, but they will do it, which is really cool. So no matter which of the XGs you buy, it's pretty much going to come like this. You're going to get the extra reservoirs, and you're gonna get the little wrench that helps you, uh, well, uninstall certain areas that I'm gonna show you here in a second. You also get the other uh, head here, a little quick switch out head, which I'm gonna grab here in a second, because apparently I can't do it with my big old, my big old fingers. But here is the airbrush itself. It, it looks just like any other airbrush out there, right? Now, before we get into all the little features, I just wanted to compare them to the other airbrushes that you've seen me use over the years. So obviously we have the Iwata right here, which goes for about $170. And well, we, it's obviously seen some better days. This isn't that old, believe it or not. Um, 
This now this goes for about 170, I want to say at Hobby Lobby. They have a little combo kit, or I think it's about 140, give or take. I'm not even sure who retails them still anymore online. Uh, Spray Gunner doesn't. Maybe some of the other retailers might. The Grex, this X, uh, this XG right here. This goes for uh, 168 from Spray Gunner. So it's kind of comparable as far as needle size. This is a 0.3, this is a 0.3. So, you know, you've seen me use this one throughout the years. And then of course we have the H&S, which uh, this is infinity two in one. So it can also be switched out nozzle wise, but this one is about $250. It has higher components, uh, interior, you know, we show you the schematics. So I'm gonna bust them out here again in a second, just to give you an idea um, once we start breaking all of these things down. So. With these two being so close in price, you can make a little bit more of an informed decision about which one might be better for you. But obviously, these are like comparing a luxury car to a normal brand name car. While they are very similar, there's going to be things that noticeably set them apart, which I'm going to also show you. So first up, let's take a look at the schematic. This is the XG exploded diagram here. They don't specifically note Teflon uh, seals over here. PTFE polytetrafluoroethylene <laughs> is the whatever the official name of uh, Teflon itself. They don't say, but as I look through it, I could definitely tell that some of these were Teflon seals, which is fine. And they do say that in their descriptions, but some of them are not. Some of them are just straight O-rings. Now, when you start comparing it to, and I only pulled uh, the Evolution, which is very similar to the Infinity for um, the H and S here, you'll notice that in many locations here, there are PTFE seals, which are going to give you that really good seal. They're they're higher quality, so they're gonna last longer. They're not gonna erode from all the different paints and thinners and things that you're using, but you really shouldn't be using any strong thinners. So like I said, this is kind of like the Cadillac model when it compares to just a normal uh, kind of car model. And then the, the Awada Eclipse, we've shown you this before. This is just using basic O-rings, basic chrome, um, components and things like here. There's no propri proprietary coatings and things on the inside to uh, kind of help keep things from sticking like there is, and I don't know specifically what they are with this uh, Grex right here, and the same uh, with this H&S that we've shown you in the past. Now there's different uh, chromes and, and different interior coatings that make this a little bit better and obviously add to the price point but uh, that kind of isn't quite the thing that we're gonna talk about right here. So let's jump in and kind of show you how all this is gonna compare. So right off the bat, this is a pretty hefty little uh, airbrush. It's not, it's probably heavier than uh, the Iwata one right here, but uh, without a doubt, it is heavier. Now, uh, ergonomics wise, with this little attachment, these little rubberized, uh, which are pretty high quality, you can actually use their cleaner, which I use quite regularly. This is a concentrated cleaner. I think it's probably one of the best out there for your airbrush. So you wanna use like one drop of this, a whole uh, reservoir of uh, water to blow through your airbrush, probably after every couple of uses, or if you use a kind of a thicker paint, you may notice that it's a little bit of sticking and you need to do that. Um, that is not standard. You do not need to do that every time. Your water should be washing everything through. If you're using the Grex or you're using the h &S, you might have to use that every time if you do have uh, an Awada here. So these are gonna help you help control this. Like I said, it's good for beginners, but a little bit higher learning curve right here, okay? It's clunkier. You can kind of feel the mechanics right here. Um, it's, you know, almost a little bit clunkier than the Iwata and almost definitely way clunkier because I can just go bam and get my air spray right there. As a matter of fact, here, I'll just hook it up and show you. So I can literally pull this back and do things that I can't quite do with this airbrush right here, but I'll get that hooked up here in a second, but that's okay. But for me, I'm gonna pull all this rubberized stuff off, which you can definitely pull off to uh, clean um, your airbrush, like the exterior and things, and there's your logo and there's everything right there. Now, one of the coolest things about this airbrush that I'm about to show you, and I'm trying to be very careful, is that this little guard up here, these are actually magnets. It literally sticks in like that. But that being said, you wanna be super careful when you're using like your brush, your plastic bristle brush and things to kind of clean that up. So 
for me personally, what I would do is I would switch it out with this pinch one right here so I can do some back flushing and such. Now, I had already put lube in this airbrush and one of the better lubes out there, believe it or not, is Iwata. So I use Iwata lube, I use Grex cleaner and I use an H&S airbrush normally. So there's no right or wrong way to do anything. It's only crazy if it doesn't work when it comes to this hobby, right? So parts wise, this is where you switch out your uh, reservoirs at the top and there you can see that's a definitely a Teflon seal so no no uh, no brainer right there there's also a Teflon seal on the inside which I'm probably not going to be able to show you but I did see it it is in there now down here you don't have any adjustments for your air pressure where on the H&S you actually and it's a good thing I'm turning this off you actually have an air pressure uh, depress uh, adjustment so not only do you can you adjust the um, pull on your spring back but you can also adjust the pressure right here going down as well which is very important depending on you know your personal preferences so that's just something to note you don't have that adjustment right there you're pushed down and actually your pullback is exactly as it um as it comes pretty much standard unless i guess you could change out the spring in here if you really wanted to now this is a quick set so you can kind of set where you you want your final pull to be back it's not going to adjust the feel or the push or the pull of your pull um but it, it will set it so if like if you're just doing some base coating or stuff um it may help you right there now once we pull all of this out so it just looks like any other airbrush right it just has uh you know a nice chrome coating right there that cleans pretty easy at, at least it's been in my experience but as you see um, everything in here is pretty standard as far as what you would expect. There's, you know, a needle guard or a needle guide and you've got, I don't even know, um, you're spraying everything in here. But what you might not expect, and once we start, let me pull this needle out. Once I start breaking this down and showing you all the different things, is that it's a little bit difficult if you need to get in here and clean, which you will have to get in here and clean at some point. So there's there's your air uh, depress, and then you've got your little um, support right here that kind of uncharacteristically locks into this slot right here. So it's a, it's a little bit of a learning curve, and it's a little bit of a kind of a challenge to like reassemble if you're maybe new, whereas with the H and S or even the Infinity, well, the Infinity is a little finicky too. But it's just it's just a little step of. Um, that may be a little bit difficult for a beginner uh, to kind of grasp. Another thing that's uh, a little different design-wise, uh, proprietary-wise for Grex is the way that they have this, uh, this nozzle system set up here, this internal combustion paint mix uh, that generally takes place inside this cap right here as I'm gently pulling all of this out. So this is where um, your paint and your water and everything's gonna mix. It's gonna push all of your um, your air and everything through here. I actually, I think it mixes it back in here in an area that you can't actually get to in service. This does pull out. And I wanna caution you, if you take anything away from this video, I just wanna tell you, be very careful here because these threads are very, easy to strip very very easy to strip both on this this part right here and also the internal threads themselves and i've had a couple instances where i've actually de-threaded those and if you strip or shear the threads off inside of this uh, there is a quick solution to get them out but there isn't a quick solution unless you de-threaded uh, the little nozzle piece right here so you, what you want to do to adjust this and don't feel like you need you, the paints you are using you should be able to push water through this at any given time you should not ever think that you have to always unhook this clean it and put it back after every use that is not by design and that's probably just going to result in you messing something up <laughs> for lack of a better term if you're new to the hobby so you're just going to want to cautiously go counterclockwise and this is going to unthread or unseat out and you're going to be able to pull it out now if you know you got a clog in there you might have to go in and get it here's here's the thing be very very gentle and just use that to get the initial uh pull or push off 
try to hand tighten this always so you don't over crank it and it's very, very easy to strip those threads in there. Now, I don't wanna alarm anybody and be like, hey, you've got a ticking time bomb. That is not the case or anything like that. If, if you do strip threads and you can't get this needle out of there because you use this attachment too forcefully, what you can do is take a, um, a toothpick and actually you can jam down the toothpick in there and get the threads themselves, or excuse me, the, the toothpick up into uh, the needle itself and jam the toothpick in there and then turn the toothpick because the wood will actually give and, and grab the threads that shouldn't be up in this piece, get them out of there so that you can get things fixed. Um, or you could always send it back to Grex. They will fix it for you. There might be a fee for something like that, but they will take care of it for you. So just kind of keep that in mind right there. What happens in here, you know, you're not necessarily always going to be get, able to get to it. So just realize that and know that you're going to have to um, make sure that this area down here is always clean and uh, looking good. And obviously you can use some of their cleaner. But remember, it's concentrated. Always mix it with a lot of water. So I got it cooked up to my quick release, my GMAC valve, and I just realized that this is my, actually my old Grex GMAC uh, valve as well for quick release and also you can fine tune the air pressure well as well. So like I said, I use an amalgam of a whole bunch of different hobby uh, projects out there. Now we're gonna load some paint in here and one of the best ways to load paint is put drop in a whole bunch of Airbrush Flow Improver from Vallejo. I like to fill up the little top of the reservoir right there and then we're gonna drop in uh, some of our paint. We're working on some tanks here, so I'm gonna hit it up with some greedy gold. And we'll go bright gold as well. Do a little 50-50 mix right here. Since, since we got you here, we'll show you something that actually uh, you can see instead of just doing the same color over again. And then we're gonna grab a buster brush, switch it around in our reservoir here to get a nice, good, consistent mix of those paints and you can use those bristles to kind of get down inside of the airbrush itself into the pre-mix, I guess, area chamber where the air is gonna come through and mix with, uh, with the paint and the water a little bit. So, you know, if you're always working the sides of the, the things right there or the sides of the walls, you know, hopefully you won't get any uh, back flush or anything. I'm gonna turn down the air pressure. We're at about a 40 so i'm going to turn this all the way down which would be at zero and crank it back up and try to be around like a 25. now i switched out this tip right here so i'm going to pinch i'm going to pinch it's called a pinch tip and do a little back flush right there to mix it give it a little extra then we're going to spray figure out where my lines are at right here and off camera Make sure everything's tight. And one of the other things that I mentioned too, remember you cannot adjust the down pressure of the air or the pull backwards either. So I'm locked in at just whatever resistance and push and pull I'm gonna have right there, which is good or bad depending on uh, the cleanliness of your airbrush and, and that stuff right there. So this is a, um, a Legio Custodes Caladius Grav Tank from Forge World that we're gonna work on real quick right here. And turn up the, maybe my air pressure's down a little too low. Okay, so then we're just gonna fade things out a little bit on these little fairings down here. And what's really cool about this is that we can go in really tight and then also hit it with a little air because of that nozzle tip right there. So that one's, uh, that one's pretty cool actually. So you can see here, it's it, it works good. It's a 0.3 needle, so I'm not doing anything that I was already had slated to do with my H&S airbrush. But it definitely works. And it definitely will get the job done in those areas that you could use this needle size on itself. Uh, it's got a good mix. Lots of good, important uh, support over on their site. It is an airbrush that is robust. It's durable. It's rugged. 
They've got great accessories that we showed you with all these things right here, along with the GMAT control valve, which I definitely recommend you pick up if you are interested in this Grex or just interested in using it with any airbrush at all. Um, but they just, they're just not as adjustable and they have a little bit of a high learning curve in my opinion. However, they are inherently a very good quality brush. They are an American company as far as I know, they're based out of Los Angeles. Of course, everybody, I don't think anybody actually makes their airbrushes here in America, but I digress. And it's just, just good all around customer support and service if you have any issues. So again, this was the Grex XG3, three stands for 0 0.30 needle. Um, I believe it's the Tritium, excuse me, it was the Genesis. And overall, it's a, it's a great airbrush. So if you've been looking for something about the price point of the Awada Eclipse, uh, this, well, this is a great alternative to the Eclipse itself. And at the price point, it definitely can't be beat. It's definitely in the same class as the Iwata too. So that's it for this uh, unboxing review and comparison, and maybe hopefully a little bit education on how to use the airbrush and all different components and such. Um, and a comparison to the other popular airbrushes out there on the market today. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and comment on all our videos.